On the evening of May 7, 2019, a mundane traffic violation spiraled into a tragic event that would shake the town of Riverdale, Georgia. The tranquil southern evening was interrupted by the screeching of tires and the harsh crash of metal on metal. Kenneth Herring, a 62-year-old local, had run a red light colliding head-on with an imposing 18-wheeler. His Dodge pickup truck, once a testament to his hard-working nature, was now a twisted wreck, the front end crushed under the weight of the collision. But the accident was just the beginning. The real mystery began to unfold in the minutes that followed. As onlookers assessed the damage and emergency calls were dialed, Kenneth, to the shock of all, climbed back into his mangled truck. Despite the severity of the crash and the state of his vehicle, he drove off, leaving a trail of unanswered questions and concerned whispers in his wake. Something was clearly not right with Kenneth that day. His actions were not those of a man who had just survived a severe crash. His behavior was erratic, his decision-making questionable. He seemed oblivious to the danger he had just escaped and the potential danger he posed to himself and others on the road. As the crowd of onlookers watched Kenneth's truck disappear in the distance, a chilling realization set in. Everyone at the scene could sense that something was amiss, yet none could have predicted the tragic turn of events that was about to ensue. Little did anyone know, the real danger was not the crash, but a witness who decided to take the law into her own hands. This witness, a 21-year-old woman named Hannah Payne, would soon become a central figure in a shocking case that would grip the nation. But that's a story for the next scene. For now, Let's return to that fateful evening and the unfortunate incident that started it all. Enter Hannah Payne, a 21-year-old woman who saw the crash and decided to act. Hannah Payne was a young woman with a strong sense of justice who'd been raised in a traditional Southern household. She was known in her community for her vivacious spirit and her unwavering belief in doing what's right, no matter the circumstances. On that fateful day, Hannah happened to witness Kenneth Herring's erratic behavior and the aftermath of his crash. Driven by her instinct to uphold the law, Hannah decided to follow Kenneth. She dialed 911 as she tailgated his damaged Dodge pickup truck. The operator on the other end of the line was calm, methodically asking Hannah for details. She described the scene, her voice tinged with an urgent concern, painting a vivid picture of the events unfolding on the road. The operator advised Hannah to keep her distance, to stay safe, and to let the police handle the situation. But Hannah, filled with a determination to prevent any further potential harm, made a decision that would forever change the course of her life and Kenneth's. She decided to confront Kenneth. She felt compelled to step in, to stop Kenneth from causing any more damage. She believed that she could make a difference, that she could prevent a potential disaster. Her intentions were good, but as we all know, good intentions do not always lead to good outcomes. She ignored the operator's warnings and continued to follow Kenneth, her heart pounding in her chest, her mind racing with the potential scenarios that could unfold. She was stepping into the unknown, armed with nothing but her will to do what she thought was right. Ignoring the operator's advice to stay clear, Hannah chose to intervene, setting a tragic sequence of events into motion. This was the moment when Hannah Payne, a 21-year-old woman who just wanted to do what was right, became a vigilante. Her actions that day would not only impact her life, but also the life of Kenneth Herring and their respective families. The course of their lives was about to take a dramatic turn, all because of a decision made in the heat of the moment. By the time Hannah caught up with Kenneth, he was already in a dire condition. Kenneth, disoriented and confused, had driven off from the crash site. The adrenaline coursing through his veins, coupled with his underlying medical condition, had him in a state of panic. Meanwhile, 21-year-old Hannah, a witness to the crash, had made the fateful decision to follow him. Hannah, driven by a sense of responsibility or perhaps something else, confronted Kenneth. The encounter was far from peaceful. Kenneth, still confused and possibly scared, was in no state to reason with her. As the confrontation escalated, so did the tension. Onlookers watched in disbelief as the young woman struggled with the older man. In the midst of this struggle, Hannah made a decision that would alter the course of both their lives. She reached for the gun she was legally permitted to carry. You see, Hannah was a gun rights advocate, and she always had her firearm with her. The gun, an object meant for protection, became a symbol of fear and chaos that day. Hannah, a young woman who had never been in such a situation before, was now holding a loaded weapon in a public space. The gravity of the situation was palpable. Fear, confusion, and uncertainty hung in the air like a thick fog. 
Kenneth, already in a state of disarray, was now faced with an even greater threat. The sight of the gun must have sent a wave of dread washing over him, but he was in no state to react appropriately. His medical condition, coupled with the shock of the accident, had left him disoriented and vulnerable. People watched, frozen in time, as the events unfolded. The confrontation had escalated beyond anyone's expectations. Hannah, the young woman who had only wanted to help, was now on the brink of causing irreparable damage. The choice to pull out her gun was not just a decision, it was a defining moment. In a split second a shot rang out, forever changing the lives of two families. As news of the shooting spread, the community was left in shock and disbelief. A quiet neighborhood had transformed into a crime scene, leaving residents grappling with the harsh reality of the incident. The sound of sirens echoed through the streets as police arrived on the scene, carefully treading through the evidence left in the wake of the confrontation. In the immediate aftermath of the shooting, the public's reaction was a mix of confusion and outrage. Local news outlets were flooded with eyewitness accounts, each a puzzle piece in the complex narrative of what had transpired. The story quickly gained national attention, sparking debates about vigilante justice and the value of human life. Social media platforms were abuzz with opinions, further fueling the fire of public discourse. The police investigation was meticulous and thorough. With Kenneth Herring's life tragically cut short, it was up to them to piece together the moments leading up to his untimely death. Every shred of evidence was scrutinized, every witness statement dissected. The scene was a complex web of clues, each more puzzling than the last. Hannah Payne, the 21-year-old who had taken it upon herself to follow Kenneth, was soon the focus of the investigation. The gun used in the shooting was found in her possession, and the evidence was mounting against her. In the eyes of the law, she had crossed a line that fateful day. Her decision to intervene had dire consequences, and she was subsequently arrested. Charges were laid against Hannah, the severity of her actions reflected in the gravity of the accusations. She was charged with murder, her fate now in the hands of the judicial system. The young woman who had started the day as a mere witness was now a suspect, her life forever marked by the events of that day. Hannah's actions had turned her from a witness to a suspect in a matter of minutes. The aftermath of the incident served as a stark reminder that actions have consequences, and that a split-second decision can alter the course of multiple lives forever. The trial that followed was watched by the nation, with everyone waiting for the verdict. The courtroom was a maelstrom of tension and anticipation as the key points of the trial unfolded. On one side, Hannah Payne's defense argued that she had acted in the interest of public safety, concerned about the apparent erratic behavior of Kenneth Herring. They painted a picture of a young woman who, in the heat of the moment, made a misguided decision. The prosecution, on the other hand, presented a starkly contrasting narrative. They argued that Hannah had overstepped her bounds, taking the law into her own hands when she had no authority to do so. They stressed the point that it was not her place to chase, confront or use deadly force against Herring, a man who, as it was later revealed, was experiencing a medical emergency at the time of the accident. The tension reached its peak as the jury retired to deliberate. The public held its collective breath, and the nation waited. The verdict, when it came, was a shock to many. Hannah Payne was found guilty of murder. The judge's gavel fell, echoing the finality of the decision in the silent courtroom. The verdict sent ripples through the community and the nation. Some saw it as a clear message that vigilante justice had no place in a society governed by law and order. Others felt that it was harsh, arguing that Hannah's actions, though misguided, were driven by a genuine concern for the safety of others. But regardless of the differing opinions, one thing was clear. The case of Hannah Payne had left an indelible mark on the public consciousness. It sparked intense debates on the role of the individual in maintaining public safety, the limits of self-appointed justice, and the very value of a human life. The case of Hannah Payne left a lasting impression, sparking debates on vigilante justice and the value of a human life.